Hello everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to continue covering the games I played this summer. So after uh, Parachin, which I finished covering in the in the final game, uh, I played Sholta. Sholta is a beautiful island in Croatia, just off the coast of Split, uh, and it's a beautiful place. Never played it before, uh, and went there with uh, a few friends, which uh, yeah, which I enjoy playing tournaments with. And it's, it was mostly Croatian people. Okay, so in round one, as it usually happens, I'm facing an extremely strong opponent uh, because of my unfavor, an, an unfortunate rating at the time. In Swiss <clears throat> Open tournaments, if you're 1900 or 2000, you either play someone a thousand, uh, 500 points lower rated at least or 500 points higher rated in this case I got to play an international master which is great I mean I'm not complaining I love playing against much stronger people I played e4 my opponent played c5 uh, I played knight f3 and he played the O'Kelly with a6 which can still transpose into many different Sicilians but I played c4 uh, basically going into a Paulsen uh, after e6. e6 is just the best move. I mean, uh, he can play d6, he can play knight c6, uh, but, but e6 is, the I think, the principled way to play. Okay, I played knight c3. Now, I can still keep the position closed if I want to with d3, but I don't think that's the best way to play, and it's, it's not. So he played queen c7 and I opened the position up with d4 and we have cd, knight d, and this is now a normal Paulson. Okay, knight f6. Now, you may have seen a game from, I'm gonna say around 6 of Parachin. Anyway, I had this exact position and I played a3. Uh, the reason you play a3 in this, in this position is to prevent uh, bishop to b4. The reason you want to pre prevent bishop b4 is because your e4 pawn is hanging. And you can defend it with bishop d3 or queen d3. But you, you get either double c pawns or this knight gets undefended. Of course, in this position, it's still pretty much fine because there's no knight on c6. So your knight is not hanging straight away, but it's still uncomfortable. Therefore, a3 is the principled move. And I drew a 2100 player. Uh, 40 moves later in um, Hedgehog versus Marozzi by in Sicily. Marozzi by in Sicily. But in this game, I played bishop to e3. And explaining why I played bishop e3, I, I just cannot do that. After the game, I spoke to Mr. Bukal, uh, who, who is an, a, a great guy, by the way. Uh, I think he was the only Croatian player in, who played Belgrade Chess Open with me. And I told him that I knew that A3 was the move and that I'd played it like a, a, a month before the game. But I still went for Bishop E3 here. Because I thought that, yeah, I'm going to play this position, it's going to be fine. Uh, so he did play Bishop B4, of course, uh, and Bishop to D3. Bishop takes c3. Now, if he doesn't do anything, if he just castles, then I have time. Then I can play queen c2, for example. And then I don't get a ruined pawn structure, e4 pawn sufficiently defended, everything's fine. So he takes on c3. I took on c3, he played d6. I castled. And here he played e5, which... Uh, I'm not sure e5 is a good move. I mean... It seems kind of risky. Uh, there have been eight games played from this position, and in all eight games, black played knight bd7, and white responded with either f4 or knight b3. So, I mean, f4 seems more sensible, although you'd rather have the bishop on f3 after that, but as I said, the c pawn is undefended. But basically, no one's ever played e5. And I think the reason is, Firstly, knight f5 is annoying. Secondly, there's an easy plan in this position, which I saw, but I didn't go for uh, in a timely fashion and then couldn't go for it. So, okay, uh, after e5, there are a couple of things I could do. Of course, the, the most obvious move is knight f5. And knight f5 has to be met with bishop f5, because if he just castles, then I'm going to get my pieces into play. 
and he will have to play bishop f5 later on because he'll get mated. So let's let's assume bishop f5 and e f5. And this seems like a fine position. I may lose this pawn, but I'm going to say that's not as important in this position because I'm going to break the position open ah, with f4 at some point. Either provoking this pawn forward, giving my bishop the d4 square, for example, castles, um, f4, e4, bishop e2, and let's say knight c6, I can go bishop d4 after I, either after this knight moves, or if it doesn't move, there's no pressure on c4, and I can just go for an attack, because he has nothing. For example, king h1, g4, g5, and rook g1, etc. <clears throat> Very good position. Or, after e5, excuse me, I can do what I did, which seemed, uh, well, it did not seem less risky to me, it seemed better to me. Uh, I, I think both moves are equally good. I think the engine says both are fine. Let me actually tell you the exact evaluation. Knight f5, 0 0.6, what I did, 0 0.4. There's actually a fourth candidate queen a4 check, which now seems to be the best move according to the engine. Okay, no, knight f5 is still best. Knight f5 best, queen a4 check second best. I played knight to c2. The reason I played knight c2 is because there's going to be annoying pressure on, on the c4 pawn, which happens straight away. So he played bishop e6. And I played queen to e2 here. Uh... He played knight bd7, and I played rook a to b1. Let me just show you an alternative. After bishop e6, what I did orig originally intended was knight to b4. And, yeah, in this position, if he takes on c4, then bishop takes c4, queen takes c4, and queen takes d6. Okay, so, whoa. So that wouldn't work straight away. So after bishop e6, after knight b4, he has to play knight bd7 first, or something similar, and prepare taking. But now I get to play knight d5. And this has to be taken, so bishop d5, cd5, no more weakness on c4. I give up the c3 pawn, but this should be more than enough compensation after, for example, queen a5, queen c2. I think, okay, the engine says white is slightly better here. I thought I should be slightly better here. And that's why I played knight c2. But after knight c2 and bishop e6, I didn't go for knight b4. I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to play queen e2 first and then see what happens. I can still go for knight b4. He played knight bd7 and now again, knight b4 should have been played. But I thought, okay, let's just reinforce the position a bit more. Rook c8 isn't scary because... I can go for the same thing anyway and just... Okay, so I played rook a b1. He castles. My position is still fine. It's still okay. And here I, I wanted to prevent knight g4 and bishop g4, so I played h3. And he played rook f to c8. Uh, rook a to c8. Uh, no, excuse me, rook f to c8. Rook f to c8. Uh, and now I'm in trouble. Now I realized, well, my queen is not on d1 anymore. What am I talking about? I can never play knight b4 now, because if knight b4, bishop c4, queen c4, I, I don't have queen d6. And also, if I did, the e5 pawn is not hanging because the knight has been developed to d7. And also, my knight is now loose on b4. So after rook fc8, okay, I, I conceded to... Defending passively and played knight a3. Okay, knight a3, fine. Uh, I'm defending my pawn. Uh, I wish I'd played knight f5 now, because knight c2, knight a3 just looks like I'm a moron. Okay, knight c5. Uh, this has to be taken, of course, because he's going to take here and then take here. So bishop takes, queen takes. And now I lost the game in the move. And... Try to pause the video here and find a defense for for uh, for white. Obviously, the problem is that this knight defends the pawn, the queen attacks the knight. So you move the knight, you lose the pawn. 
You don't move the knight, you lose the knight. Okay. So I, I played the obvious move. Rook b3, which is such a horrendous blunder. I don't think I've blundered this this bad for for a while. And as soon as I played it, I saw what he was going to play and... Ugh. Okay, so obviously he plays b5. Uh, yeah. I cannot take that because I lose my rook. Um, I, I cannot move my knight because I lose a piece. Uh, I cannot take here because I lose my rook, as I said. Uh, I don't know what else. I cannot move my bishop because he takes here. And after I move my rook, I lose my knight. So anyway, I just took on b5 with the knight, which is the only sensible move. And after a, b, rook b, at least I get a pawn. Queen a3. Rook b2, queen c3, rook fb1, and here he played h6 and I resigned. Uh, after h6 there are no more tricks. Before h6 maybe I can mate him if he makes a mistake. But maybe I can mate him. For example, if instead of h6 he takes here, then you know, okay, I may have some chances for something. It's not made because he can go back, but... Anyway, after h6 I resigned. Uh, the first mistake in this game was just not, not playing a3. I, I don't know why I wanted to play a position without it. But yeah, as soon as your opponent plays e6 and this bishop can come to b4, in Maroxi bind positions you have to play a3. That's, that's just a rule. And then after e5, not going for knight f5, I'm not going to say this is a mistake. I think knight c2 is still a good move, but not following up on it immediately is problematic. But after knight c2, bishop e6, not playing knight before straight away, that's, I'm going to say, the losing mistake. Even though rook b3 is a tactical blunder that lost the game on the spot, I'm going to say not playing knight before is, is the reason that happened, because had I played knight before, I wouldn't have been in, in trouble at all. Because after knight bd7, then simply knight d5, and we saw this position. So I, I, I just played poorly and lost quickly, and this is how strong players win. Weak players just make stupid mistakes which strong players would never make. Hopefully one day I'm going to stop doing mistakes like this. Yeah, see you tomorrow for more chess, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.